means members of the Second Episcopal District Women's Missionary Society and all others viewing our YouTube channel. Thank you each for viewing. Appreciation to Episcopal President Salaria Moore for the opportunity to record this presentation. Also to our servant leadership and brother Jarrell Pridgen, recorder extraordinaire. During our first annual District Mission Institute, Sister Moore on November 21st, as our Episcopal WMS president, expounded on our servant leaders theme, the real church rising to the challenge. She established the second Episcopal District WMS theme for 2021, the real workers magnifying service. President Moore stated a directive to the Episcopal parliamentarian, myself, to roll out, present the new revisions of our constitution and bylaws to the district. As currently the 2020-2024 WMS Constitution and Bylaws is now printed and the distribution process is occurring. So I hope you have your copy in hand to follow along with the presentation. Presenting the revisions of the 2020-2024 Constitution and bylaws of the Women's Missionary Society of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, prepared and presented by Sister Regina D. Melvin, Episcopal Parliamentarian, Second Episcopal District, Women's Missionary Society, December 2021. Our Second Episcopal District servant leaders are Bishop James Lavert Davis, presiding prelate, Mrs. Arlellis. Beavers Davis, Episcopal Supervisor, Sister Miss Salaria Moore, Episcopal President, and Miss Annette Dockery, Episcopal YPD Director. Please email any questions to this email, the number two, second WMS Parliamentarians at gmail.com. So that second WMS Parliamentarians at gmail.com. Replies will be sent out to all second Episcopal District conferences via the appropriate conference parliamentarian officer. Again, thank you for viewing YouTube channel Second Episcopal District WMS AMEC. Objectives of the presentation to achieve consistency of information, interpretation, and to increase members' working knowledge of the revisions of the 2020-2024 Constitution and Bylaws of the Women's Missionary Society of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Number two, to fully participate in their society, we encourage members across the Second Episcopal District to study the content of the WMS Constitution and Bylaws. Number three, to provide the district with open communication and prompt feedback via your Episcopal district and conference parliamentarian officers team. Note, effective immediately, the constitution and bylaws revisions apply to all levels of the WMS. The revised constitution and bylaws of the Women's Missionary Society of the AME Church was approved at the 19th WMS Quadrennial Convention, which convened July the 28th through August the 1st, 2019 in Columbus, Ohio. The revisions were ratified at the 51st Quadrennial Session of the General Conference of the AME Church, which convened July the 6th through the 10th, 2021 in Orlando, Florida. Note, the time of difference is because of the global pandemic, COVID. Definitions, the constitution is a body of fu fundamental operating principles that govern the operation of an organization. The bylaws, comprise specific rules by which 
the organization is to function. Let's get right into it. The Constitution. Number one, we have the addition of the new Office of Financial Secretary. Pages three and four, Article Seven, Title Officer Selections One, Elected Officers. Here you have 17 offices. Now, since we haven't added financial secretary. Identified below is a list of the additional pages, articles, and sections noting the new office of financial secretary. Financial secretary is inserted after the office of treasurer. On all levels, the financial secretary is added to the list of elected officers and as members of the Commission on Administration. There are actually 12 pages that deal with the financial secretary, at either inserting it as a office or member of the Commission on Administration, or as you see now, we're gonna get into the qualifications and duties. On the connectional level bylaws, page 18, hope you're following me. Qualifications on the connectional level for financial secretary. Qualifications, any candidate for the position of financial secretary must have at least a bachelor's degree or its equivalent in business accounting or finance. And number two, at least five years of experience in accounting, finance, or budgeting. B, duties and responsibilities. Please note that you must look at each level to see if the duties and responsibilities are different on one of the levels, it is different, and we will get to that in a moment. Duties and responsibility, financial secretary. One, maintain an independent set of records of all financial transactions. Number two, assist with the work in concert with the treasurer. Basically, the treasurer and the financial secretary should be on one accord serve as a member of the Commission on Administration. This is just a different way for check and balances within the Women's Missionary Society. Here you ha have a continuation of the pages and articles where the duties and or responsibilities of financial secretary have been inserted. What I would suggest you do is to highlight these pages in your current constitution and bylaws. And for all new members, it's easy for you. You do not know the previous or uh, constitution and bylaws. So all of this is new to you and we welcome and hope you receive the education. Current members, we ask that you please adhere to our current constitution and bylaws. Thank you. Episcopal bylaws. What you see here are listed 13 officers. Now on the Episcopal level, there are 15 officers. What you do not see listed here on page 30 are the Episcopal presidents and the Episcopal YPD director. Why? Because they are appointed officers and their duties are spelled out already in the bylaws because it's not a new position. Remember this presentation, we're highlighting the revisions 
of the Constitution and bylaws. So you see here, financial secretary, again, inserted after treasurer. One thing to note also is that on the Episcopal level, these officers shall be as provided and appropriate for the Episcopal level for the designated connectional officers. What that means is the Episcopal supervisor and president have the flexibility to determine the duties and responsibilities that are appropriate and are served in the best interest of the Episcopal district. Conference bylaws on page 37, similar to the connection and also the financial secretary is a member of the commission on administration on all levels. Next screen, the local bylaws, page 45, duties of officers, the same, the duties of the local financial secretary are the same as on the conference level. What I did was group all the financial secretary's information. So all of those pages we just discussed were number one of the revisions dealing with the financial new office of financial secretary. Number two, constitution amendments, page six. Give you a moment to read that. And at the bottom is the revision. The last sentence, the adoption of such an amendment shall require a two thirds vote of those delegates present and voting. This is to clarify the who votes on the amendments to a constitution, to our constitution. The same similar wording or exact wording for amending to the bylaws. This is number three, revision on page six. And again, amendment of the bylaws, the adoption of such an amendment shall require a two thirds vote of those delegates present and voting. It basically clarified who can vote. Purality, voting for quadrennial convention delegates in the bylaws on page nine. I'll just read the first portion. By convention delegates, section two, by purality vote, there shall be five elected delegates from a conference with a voting membership of 350 or more. That means purality means the leading candidate, the winner takes all, block voting. Whom whichever candidate receives the pure vote shall be elected as the five delegates in this case uh, from a conference with 350 or more members. Remember, the convention is coming up in July and we will be voting for convention delegates doing our series of annual conferences, which will begin in about, what, five months? Please remember that each conference shall have at least one elected delegate. Revision number five, page 34. I'll give you a moment to catch up with me. You want, you should be in the section of the conference. Page 34, article three, operational and structural framework. 
This is a new section. Number four, sustentation. The expenses of the conference president are to be paid by the conference level. The expenses of the area chairpersons are to be paid by the area level. This is for clarification purposes. Presidents and area chairpersons, you may want to review your current practices and our budgets to see if they now comply with the revisions of the 2020-2024 Constitution and bylaws. Revision number six, conference voting membership, page 35. How does a person become a voting member of the conference? Says it right here. A member may become enrolled and eligible to vote by one, registering with the conference. Registration is so important. Number two, the individual name appears on the roll for one year and the presentation to the conference credentials certified by the local pastor and the local president. And number three, paying local area and conference dues where it applies. Pretty straightforward. Next. Area chairpersons. This has been a revision basically of a correction on page 40, previous on the second paragraph. Previously, it stated area presidents and area directors shall, but the revision and current information, correct information is area chairpersons to make it consistent with all of the data found in the constitution and bylaws. Area chairpersons and area directors shall have specific responsibility of promoting the program goals and objectives of the Women's Missionary Society within their area of responsibility. Now, just a note, some districts do not have areas, but as we know in the second Episcopal district, our areas play such an important part as liaison with the conferences. The local society, page 42, article two, responsibilities of the local society, section one, second paragraph two. I'm pausing to let you get into the local bylaws, again, page 42. D, educate, promote opportunities to worship and study and share yearly study book curriculum beyond its membership and beyond its membership and congregation. So what does that mean? It's giving us a bylaw that we can continue to do some of the practices I know a lot of the local societies had been doing, but also which is sharing the study book curriculum within our membership of your local society, but also encouraging you to share it with your church membership and beyond the walls of the church congregation to other organizations. So think about ways that your local society can either continue this practice or begin it. Local president sustentation, page 43, clarification, section three sustentation. The expenses of the local president are to be paid by the local level of which that officer is a member. Now we come to the appendix and I put revision as revision number two, 
this new appendix, page seven, it falls on page 71, but I chose to put it at the end of the Women's Missionary Society revisions of the bylaws because it is new. And it states the African Methodist Episcopal Church Order of Women's Missionary Society. It details in the bylaws what our colors are for the Women's Missionary Society. And if I may take a proud moment of our sisters within the Baltimore Conference who previously submitted this as a proposed amendment and it was approved back on 2019 at the quadrennial. And here it is within our constitution and bylaws. That's using the amendment process, which I want you to be aware of it because it's time for us to do that again soon. In January, uh, we will start that process for the upcoming quadrennial. And we hope that you participate. So you see the colors of the Women's Missionary Society shall be white with a touch of royal blue. I'll let you read through that. And it continues stating that the colors and attire of the WMS for districts 14 to 20 may include the leopard attire uniform, black robe, white collar, and leopard skin cap. Note, this does not apply to district 16. Appendix continue from page 71. Color symbolism. Let's read through this to remind us why we wear white, why we wear blue. White, symbolic of purity of life and conversation, light that shines more and more in faith. World blue, symbolic of peace and healing, power of God. It has positive effects on the mind and body. It represents trust, loyalty, sincerity, wisdom, confidence, and faith. We're all blue. Leopard skin or leopard skin design material, symbolic of grace, quickness, determination, and endurance to fight sin and to defend righteousness. Revision number 11. This is a note that there were no changes to the robing ceremony. However, except for the fact that it was formerly Appendix A, now it is Appendix B. You may think, why is it good for a member to know about the Constitution and bylaws? Well, Robert's Rules of Order, the 12th edition, page 15, under Rules of an Assembly or Organization, states, I'll para paraphrase a little, a member should become familiar with the contents of these rules if he or she looks toward full participation in the society's affairs. So that's why we want to learn each individual, each member should learn, be familiar. Remember the goals and objectives I stated earlier? Increase your knowledge of the constitution and bylaws. While you're looking at the current constitution bylaws, you may see a few typos. These will be corrected at the next printing. The WMS Constitution revisions means that leadership on all levels should prepare any needed adjustments to adhere to the revisions. 
please consult with your upline as appropriate. Now we come to a very important part, the YPDers. What does YPD mean? You hear it all the time. Well, I'm happy to say I'm a forever YPDer. Young People's and Children Division of the Women's Missionary Society, Second Episcopal District, African Methodist Episcopal Church. We are glad you're here to view the revisions of the current constitution and bylaws. We'll use the acronym YPD, Connectional Bylaws. Revision number 12 within the complete document, YPD membership ages. This outlines and clarifies the wording stating page 49, article four, membership, section one, regular membership. Any young person of the church ages two to 26 years of age who is active and in good and regular standing in their local organization. Revision number 13, YPD qualifications to run for office, connectional bylaws. If you are on page 51, see article eight, Officers Election Procedure, Section 5D. Be at least 13 years of age, but not older than 22 years of age at the time of election is the revision clarification purposes. Connectional bylaws. Duties of elected officers. The third vice, we're on page 52. Section 4B, serve as the chairperson of the International Relations Committee. That is a change of word. Previously, it stated international, the name of the committee was International Awareness Committee. So now the committee is International Relations Committee. And here you have information about the International Relations Committee on page 56. A, provide opportunities for children, youth, and young adults to exchange ideas, programs, and objectives for districts one through 20. That is a clarification, noting that the connection includes all districts one through 20. Thank you. YPD Episcopal Bylaws, revision number 16, composition of the YPD Executive Board. on the Episcopal level. Remember, as you're looking through the bylaws, make sure you're adhering to what level you are searching for information. The revision section 1D and 1E, connectional officers elected or appointed who reside in the Episcopal district. Clarification. And E, the Episcopal Director and Conference Directors in Advisory Capacity. And that is a correction of the word to Episcopal Director. Officers in General, YPD Conference Bylaws, page 64. Are you still with me? We're on page 64. An elected officer not performing his or her duty shall be notified in writing by the conference director with a copy of the conference president. In such failure to perform continues for a period of 60 days after notification 
the matter shall be referred to the executive board for action. These are, again, checks and balances that we have within our constitution and bylaws and procedures that have to be adhered to. Previously, this stated a period of 90 days. The revision is 60 days. Voting membership. Voting members on the conference shall be elected officers of the conference, connectional and Episcopal officers residing within the conference area, local, presidents, and delegates who have registered and attended at least one annual convention of the conference and are active in the local organization. So again, we're coming up to annual conferences. If someone within your society, your YPD wants to vote, check and see if they're a member of the voting membership of the conference and are a delegate as the revision states there. Note, there are no changes to the YPD local bylaws. Appendix C was a previously Appendix B. Remember, the appendixes were renumbered or reordered. Revisions number 19 and 20. Page 74, YPD colors and uniforms. It's giving additional flexibility to our YPDers as article or section A, 1B for ladies, young ladies, forest green, white blazer or jersey, giving them flexibility and jerseys are easier are more readily available across the connection. And for young men, 2A, trousers, forest green or khaki. B, forest green, white blazer or jersey. Well, second Episcopal district, Women's Missionary Society to be the real workers magnifying service. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15. This is how by studying the constitution and bylaws, is how we will show ourselves approved to God to be the real workers magnifying service. There is a team that is available to help you. That team is our conference parliamentarians. Let's meet them. Sister Mary Fisher, Baltimore Conference. Sister Mary Fisher was elected in 2021, a member of Adams Chapel AMB Church. Her pastor is Reverend Rosalind Crosby. Sister Angela W. Moss, a member of the National Association of Parliamentarians, serves as a parliamentarian for the Virginia Conference. Elected 2021, a member of Third Street Bethel AME Church, Pastor Reverend Reuben Boyd Jr. Sister Gina Pettis Dean, Western North Carolina Conference Parliamentarian, a member of St. Matthew AME Church, Pastor Reverend Marion B. Robinson, elected year 2021. 
Sister Margaret Smith Perkins, registered parliamentarian, Washington Conference parliamentarian, elected year 2015, a member of Ward Memorial AME Church, Pastor Reverend Dietrich O. Rivers. And we have Sister Joanne Balt, North Carolina Conference parliamentarian, elected 2016, a member of Kendall Chapel AME Church, no current appointment as of this reading. Two of our conference parliamentarians are WMS Life members, that is Sister Mary L. Fisher, Baltimore Conference, and Sister Joanne Vault of the North Carolina Conference. Your second Episcopal District team. Yours truly, Sister Regina D. Melvin, Episcopal Parliamentarian. I am now in my 38th year as a WMS member. I am a fifth generation AME, a fourth generation WMS, and that's documented. It's in my DNA. I am blessed to serve. Currently a member of St. Matthew AME Church, Raleigh, Reston, North Carolina Conference. My pastor is Reverend Marion B. Robinson. We thank each of you for viewing. I hope and trust the objectives were met. Please continue to educate yourself, local societies, areas, conferences. This is how we continue to thrive as an organization in keeping building the kingdom, keeping the real workers magnifying service. May the peace of God and the joy of service be with you always. Thank you.